wishing on a star to follow where you are. I'm wishing on a dream to follow what it means. And I wish on all when it was just recently announced that Voyager 1 was in interstellar space, it was like humanity had just become an interstellar species, knocking on eternity's door. Voyager's on the other side of the solar system, and it's billions and billions of miles from the nearest other human-made object. Voyager made it, accomplished something no one dreamed it could do. Every second, it goes to another place where we have never been before. It's on an escape trajectory. It's not coming back. It's just going to keep going forever and ever out into empty, empty space. There's this body, this 10-sided can called the bus. And that's got all the electronics and the computers. And that's got these arms and these appendages that stick out. This is feet that connected it to the rocket. And then a really long arm with a magnetic field sensor on it over here, and another arm over there with this plutonium power supply to give it its electricity. You can't keep that too close to the spacecraft because it'll radiate the spacecraft. And another arm with this device that had the cameras and other instruments on it that could point around, kind of like the eyes. And the big antenna was the ears. When everything is fully extended, it's comparable in size to sort of a small school bus, a strange looking being for our planet. In the beginning, it would be just a little dot getting bigger on the screen every day. And as we would get closer and closer, the images became more dramatic. The encounters, they, they creep up on you. When we were approaching, every picture was the greatest picture ever taken of Jupiter. Incredibly strange and beautiful, and now by Voyager revealed in all of its splendor. Even to this day, we don't fly color detectors you get a much higher resolution image in black and white. And so when we want to make color, we take them through different filters, and then on the ground, you put it together and make a color image out of it. You go to Jupiter, and you have a storm that's been around for more than 300 years. That's the great red spot. You could fit two or three Earths inside it. When Voyager started getting close-up images, we realized that it was very active. And that deepened the mystery of how these big storms could even exist with all this turbulence going on. It was swallowing up clouds and spitting out others. first picture ever of Jupiter's ring. Jupiter was really just wonderful. It was just discovery after discovery. Jupiter was a game changer. Jupiter reset all the registers. Now we're really up for something. And to know that this was just the very, very beginning of this journey. If we're blown away by Jupiter, We started off with images that were probably no better than uh, what you can get from the ground, and then it keeps getting better and better and better as you get closer and closer. What are we gonna see when we get really close? 
having seen Saturn in a telescope with the rings just looking like these little tiny ears on either side, to now seeing detail and the beauty of Saturn's rings, you know, looking like almost like the grooves on a phonograph record. The rings of Saturn, what are they? Billions of icy particles, some the size of a house. They're enormous, much wider than many Earths strung together, but less than a kilometer thick. We get there and we find that it's a blizzard of features throughout the rings. And Saturn. Titan's the most extraordinary place. There is a dense methane atmosphere where a complex organic chemistry has been going on. Voyager 1 had succeeded. We almost didn't have that mission to Uranus and Neptune, if not for the success of Voyager 1 at Titan. shadow of Saturn on the rings and it was clearly from this wild crazy angle wow holy cow we're on the other side of Saturn It was like taking something that was almost fictional, almost mythological, and then seeing it as a real object. Spacecraft flew through that system like a bullseye because Uranus is tilted on its side with this beautiful aquamarine blue methane atmosphere. Every time we arrived at a new planet, there were always surprises, even though we had gotten a lot smarter. For instance, before Voyager, all the magnetic fields have the magnetic pole near the rotation axis of the planet. At the time the Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by Uranus, one pole was pointing at the sun. At that point in its orbit, its atmosphere shuts down. So the planet didn't look exciting. There it was, just sitting out on the edge of our solar system, waiting for somebody to come out and appreciate its beauty. Just waiting for the day that humans would get out there and, and go, wow. Neptune was photogenic right from the beginning. I had been taking pictures of Neptune from the ground, where we couldn't see very much. You know, in my head, imagining what it might look like and seeing that turned into reality. It's a rush. It was evocative of the Earth, which was bizarre for the last planet that we were flying by.
several billion miles of journey to get us to within a few kilometers of where we need. The last thing that we'll see in our solar system is now behind us. And they went from the Voyager planetary mission to the Voyager interstellar mission. years of uh, intense effort. People have been taking selfies of our planet for as long as the space program has been going on. No one had ever taken one like this. They ended up on Valentine's Day, 1990, taking this beautiful family portrait. when we did our portrait of each of the planets. You know, I just sat there for a while, just kind of realizing, wow, that's, that's the Earth. You know, that's Voyager looking back at the Earth. And the next slide, the Earth in a sunbeam. In this color picture, you can see that it is, in fact, less than a pixel. And this is where we live, on a blue dot. On that blue dot, <clears throat> that's where everyone you know and everyone you ever heard of and every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. I think this perspective underscores our responsibility to preserve and cherish that blue dot, the only home we have. So the Voyager record has a set of pictures on it that depicts our civilization, but we only had the ability to do about 100 pictures. That was as much data as we could send. So that was kind of hard. Is taking something that's small but can represent the whole. thought it was very important to pick some pictures of humans nude on the records of naked humans without it looking salacious. Voyager 1 has left our solar system. It's the first thing built by humans that has left our solar system, and now it's in interstellar space. Major historic announcement by NASA just a short time ago confirming the Voyager spacecraft. Voyager, as in the thing that launched way back in 1977, exploring the moons, exploring the planets, while well, it has entered interstellar space. felt like we were there. Nobody even thought about it. All of planetary exploration to me is a story about longing. It's a longing to know ourselves. It's a longing to understand the significance of our own existence. It's because it will have gone silent, and we really won't have a chance to say goodbye.
lost. 